I am Dr. Ala Gopalakrishna Gokhale, cardiothoracic transplant and minimal access surgeon. In the next few minutes, I want to explain about what is heart bypass surgery, when we do that, and what are the precautions to be taken after bypass surgery. Many a time when a patient is told that he requires a bypass surgery, they get scared. But I want to tell you that there is nothing to get scared about it. It is a very easy operation being done these days, very commonly. And I will tell you why we need bypass surgery and what are the precautions to be taken after that so that you can recover faster. Normally, heart is the size of a fist located in the chest, slightly onto the left side, somewhere here. It pumps about 5 liters of blood to all the organs in the body so that they can work very well. While it is supplying blood to the, all the organs in the body so that they can work, it also requires oxygen, glucose and all the nutrients for it. So it supplies itself also three blood vessels. Heart is like this. It pumps blood to all the organs through this red pipe, this is called aorta. From the beginning of this aorta, there are two pipes that come to supply blood to the heart. One is called left coronary artery. It comes from here on the left side, then divides into two branches. One goes on the front, this is called left anti-descending artery. This is the most important artery of the heart. And one goes to the left side, this is called left circumflex artery. Now the other artery that comes from the right side is called right coronary artery. This way, one on the right side, one on the front, one on the left side, they surround the heart and supply blood supply to the heart. Sometimes there can be deposits in these blood vessels, deposition of cholesterol and fat. When these deposits happen, they produce narrowing in the blood vessel. When these blood vessels get blocked, then the blood supply to the blood vessel will not be normal. So when a person walks for a distance, then heart requires more blood supply as the heart rate goes up. That time, the blood vessel is not able to give that much blood supply. So they get chest pain, usually in the front of the chest, on the left side, then it may radiate into the neck, onto the left side of the hand. This is called angina pectoris. Some people get pain like this, but some people can have severe sudden chest pain, what is called heart attack. People may not have any symptoms before, but when the blood vessel gets suddenly blocked, then the blood supply to that muscle is not there and the muscle starts dying. It's called heart attack. Once people develop that such set of pain, whether it's the angina or heart attack, then they go to the hospital and the doctor admits them, does evaluation. At the end, to confirm the diagnosis, they do what is called coronary angiogram. The cardiologist passes a tube through the artery in the hand or from the groin, takes it to the mouth of those blood vessels in the heart, then gives a dye and then takes special x-rays. When we take those x-rays, it will show us if the blood vessels are clean, are there any blocks, if there are blocks, how many blocks are there, where are they, how severe are they. Based on that, we take the decision whether we should put this patient on medical management only or we should take them up for angioplasty or stenting or we should take them up for bypass surgery. For example, blocks are too severe. They are in the main part of the blood vessel. There are three blood vessels, I said. The blocks are there in all the three blood vessels and there are multiple places. In such situation, many of these patients need to go for bypass surgery. Especially if the patient has got diabetes or if patient had a previous heart attack causing damage to the heart muscle, that means heart function has become little less. These patients most of the time get benefited better with bypass surgery than with the angioplasty or only medical management. During bypass surgery, what we do basically is, for example, there is a block in this. Blood is not going down. We bring another pipe from here and connect it beyond the block. So the blood goes through the new pipe and joins the main blood vessel after the block. This is actually what we mean by bypass surgery. Many a time we take a vein from the leg and then use it for bypassing. But for the blood vessel on the front of the heart, we use an artery called internal mammary artery. We take that from inside the chest. It works for much a longer time compared to the vein. Once we decide that a patient requires bypass surgery, after looking at the angiogram and the general condition, then we do some tests to make sure the patient is fit for surgery. The anesthetist sees the patient and surgeon sees the patient. And we usually admit the patient the day before surgery. On the day of surgery, we take the patient to the operating room, give general anesthesia. And we, most of the times, approach the heart through a incision on the front of the chest here, cutting the breastbone, going to the heart. Sometimes these days, instead of the regular big operation, we may be able to do this operation through a small incision on the side of the chest. This is called minimal access surgery. The, this helps the patient to recover much faster in about three to four weeks time with a less pain, less scarring and less bleeding. Looking at your condition, we decide what is better for you 
and then we let you know by which approach we are going through this operation. After the operation, the bypass surgery, some people require one bypass, some people require three or four bypass surgeries. Whatever is required, we do it in the operating room, then we bring the patient back to the intensive care unit. There, it will take about four to six hours for the patient to come out of anesthesia. Once they come out of anesthesia, we remove the ventilator, then they'll be able to talk, they'll be able to take small sips of fluids. After about two to three days, we ship them to the ward, then we keep them in the ward for another two to three days. During this time, it is very important that the patient does a lot of physiotherapy. Physiotherapist will come and explain you what, how to do those things. And if they are done, then the recovery will be much faster. Most of the times, a patient will be discharged by about day five or day six after surgery. But it takes some time for the patient to recover. Depending upon the type of surgery, if it is a regular surgery, it takes about two to three months. If it is a minimal access surgery on the side of the chest, it takes about three to four weeks time. During this time, what type of exercise to be done and what diet to be taken, all the precautions will be explained to you by the dietitian as well as physiotherapist. But you have to remember, once we do bypass surgery, it is not a cure. For the existing blocks, we are doing bypass. But the new blocks can happen in the next few years. So patient has to take a lot of medications and precautions, do some exercises, control diabetes, control hypertension, stop smoking and reduce obesity. All these precautions we explain and they have to follow them very carefully. Otherwise, these blocks can happen again and they, may have to, they can have a heart attack again or they may have to go for bypass surgery or angioplasty. So make sure that all the drugs are taken, all the precautions are taken, what diet to be taken, the dietitian will explain. Those things need to be followed lifelong. And please remember that the patient need to come for regular checkup once in three months or six months. Your cardiologist and surgeon, they will explain. As per that, please come for regular checkups. And in the checkups, we do all the checkups, like doing checking the serum cholesterol level, triglyceride level, this is called lipid profile. Once in a year, we do this lipid profile and do a treadmill test do echocardiogram, make sure that the heart is fine. If there are some changes, then we adjust the dose of the drugs.